Okay, so now we're looking at a quite general issue that came up when we were looking at the last proof in the basis and dimension section. So, it was about, I can never remember if it's called contrapositive or converse, and that doesn't matter. It was about this statement here, this uh, fact. If V is an n-dimensional vector space and S is a V that contains an inheritance, then it's just independence. The important part of this is not the actual what it's saying, but the if, basically if k greater than n, then linear dependence, and equivalently, if, oh, equivalently, if linearly independent, then j less than equal to n. So this statement has this form. It, sa it says, basically it says something like k greater than n implies l d, linearly, linearly dependent. And it says, then it says equivalently, linearly independent implies, now I'm going to use the same let, I'm going to change the j to a k, there's no reason not to do that, k less than or equal to n, okay? It, it consists of those two statements and says they're equivalent. It says they are, those two things are equivalent. Now, the point is that linearly independent is, just means not linearly dependent. So you can write a little symbol, not linearly dependent implies. And then k less than or equal to n is really just, it's not the case that k is greater than n, right? You write it like that. So k greater than n implies linearly dependent is apparently equivalent to not linearly dependent implies not k greater than n. So this thing has the form. Now, if you can see for yourself immediately that those two statements, that this statement is equivalent to that statement, then that's fine. You use that. I often feel like I can't see that. So you see immediately that they're, that they're equivalent. I need to think about it a bit more. And so I'm going to show you how I think about it. Okay, so let's abstract even further. Instead of talking about k greater than n, linearly dependent, whatever, let's just change it to our two things are a implies b, and on the other hand, that, that's, that's the k greater than n, so a is the k greater than n, b is the linearly, linearly dependent, and then the next thing, other statement is not b implies a. Okay, so somehow... These two statements, A implies B and ooh, not B implies not A, are equivalent. Okay. So let's go down here and do this. So we look at, I'm looking to, to, to sort of explain why A implies B is equivalent to not B implies not A. And equivalent means that they are logically equivalent. They are true in exactly the same circumstances, that if you prove one, you've proved the other. Okay, if you disprove one, you disprove the other. That they mean exactly the same thing. Okay. So, what did you think of this, this implication sign? So, when we talk about it in English, we say, if, then, right? Now, an if-then statement in English or any language actually says quite a lot more, usually. Well, sometimes more, sometimes less. It says something different, really, from what a mathematician means when they say if, then. Okay. Because normally when you say, you say something like, um, if it rains, then I'll be cold, you mean to imply that there's some kind of link between being cold and it raining, right? Some kind of, not just some kind of like, there's a causal effect maybe, for example. That's, so that's one kind of implication you can get, a, a, a kind of causal implication, if then. But in math, we don't mean that. We never mean that. We just only want to talk about logical things, things that are, well, at least that's, this, uh, in this sort of way, we, we it's quite common, we're just going to talk about purely logical relations and not talk about implication. And so when we say A implies B, what we actually mean is this. So A implies B is the same as... Um, it's the same as... B... Sorry, it's the same as... What is it the same as? It's the same as... 
A implies B, it means that if you have A, then you must have B. Okay? If you have A, then you, it means if you have A, then you must have B. If you don't have A, you could have B, you could not have A. Okay. Oh, man, I always find it very difficult to remember how to, what it is. Let me just try something. If you have B, you must have A, okay? If you have, sorry, if you have A, then you must have B. Okay. So you can have B without A, but you can't have A without B. So if you, if you have A, then you must have B. So I think that's not A or B. I'll explain these symbols just now. Okay, so not A or B. So this is saying that if A is true, then B must be true. Yes. Okay. Okay, so these, what do these symbols mean? So I think I've already shown, talked about this, uh, this little square thing, which means not. So not A. And the little thing like that means or, or B. Okay, but when we use or in maths, we usually mean that either, either, either both of the things are true, or one of them's true, either one. But they're not both. They're not both false. That's all we mean. Okay. When you use or in English, you often mean either one is true or the other tr is true, but not both. That's not what we mean here. We mean this symbol, right? Which I I read as or. But it's not really the English or. It it means that, it means that at least at least one of these is true. That's what it means. Okay. So I'm saying that this implication sign, A implies B, is the same as not A or B, where I'm not A, not and or are the, are the I'm reading out these mathematical symbols. I'm not using English words. So A implies B is the same as not A or B. So that means that. If A is true, right, then not A is false, okay? So to make the whole thing, to make this thing true, we need B to be true, because we need one, at least one of them to be true. But if A is false, then not A is true, and so it doesn't matter what B is. Okay. And if B is false, okay, if B is false, you cannot, if B is false, then we need not A to be true. So we need A to be false as well, okay? So whenever you see in maths, if, then, you should think of it really as being not A, as this not A or B, this logical thing, right? Now, if you have this other statement here, and we interpret it the same way, we have not, not A, or, sorry, it's not A now, it's, if we swap the order, so it's either, so it's not, and then not B, or, and the second thing, not A, right? That's just, try, that's just changing the symbols, right? We change the symbols, okay. But not, not, is the same, is the nots go away, right? So this thing is the same as B, or not A, okay? The order doesn't matter for this or symbol. So this is the same, indeed the same as not A or B, right? So that's how those two statements are equivalent. I may as well mention here that this, so this explains what this implication sign means, right? What about the double implication sign? Okay. So that double implication sign, which is, you can read as if and only if, okay? Well, we should interpret that as meaning A implies B and B implies A, okay? All right, that's the same as 
let's see if this I can let's see if I can do this without introducing it too much new stuff. I mean, it's not A or B and not B or A. Okay. Let's see. So not A or B and not B or A. Okay, so for this thing to be true, we need both of these things. We need not A or B to be true, and we need not B or A to be true. Okay? So we need both of those to be true. For the first thing to be true, we either need B to be true, or suppose, okay, suppose that, let's do this. Suppose that, suppose that B is false, right? So suppose that B is false. Okay, but we need this whole first thing to be true. So that means that A must also be false to make not A to make not A true, right? So I'm saying that B false. I'm saying that B false implies A false, right? Okay. I'm saying that if B is false, then A must be false. Now, this whole thing is like symmetric in A and B, right? So the same thing applies to, to, to A. If A is false, then B must be false. Now suppose that A is true. Then this not A is false, okay? So we need the B to be true. So if A is true, then B is true. And it's in symmetric, so if B is true, then A is true. So in other words, this whole thing is actually the same as A and B, or not A and not B. It's, so it's saying that e either A and B are both, true, are both true, or A and B are both false. So whenever you see an if and only if, right, I think, well, this is how I think about it. I think of a, an if and only if statement like this as really meaning that A and B are either true together or false together. Okay? And that's it.